All right, so we're talking with Keith Gordon, um, director of uh, this year's uh, Robert Downey Jr. Mel Gibson um, film noir musical, The Singing Detective. Uh, Keith, uh, you are a young guy, but you've had a pretty varied career, um, actor and director, still doing both. Um, how did you get started in this business? Well, I started when I was a teenager. I was a, I was a film geek. I mean, first of all, I, would, I saw literally everything, uh, almost almost addictively. I'd go to you know, ten movies a week. I think I think it was when I was about the third or fourth Benji movie that I realized this is not good. I've got to start having a life. Uh, but simultaneously, I was also one of those kids that would run around with a Super 8 camera, making sort of bad half-finished films. And then when the school finally got a video camera, I started playing with video. Um, I was in a school play, somebody saw it, and they said, oh, you want to come audition for this professional job? And I was 15 at the time. And I did, I went and auditioned, I got the job in a real play. Uh, and I did that, and somebody saw me in that, and said, would you like to come audition for a movie? So I came and I went and auditioned for Jaws 2, uh, and got the job. So suddenly, I had this acting career going on. And this was where? In, in, the, in, in New York, New York. I grew up in New York City. Um, and... Uh, I spent about 10 months on Jaws 2, which was a really bad movie, but a great education on, in film. And for somebody who was, wanted to be a filmmaker, even more than an actor, it was wonderful to have weeks where I wasn't doing anything, but they, was, they kept me on location. And I could just hang out in the editing room they had set up there. I could hang out you know, on the set watching and just learning how films were made. So Jaws 2 was, was Keith Gordon's kind of practical film school. It was the first step. And then from there, I, I got working as an actor. I went back and forth between theater in New York and doing films did Broadway, off-Broadway, and big films, little movies as an actor. And I tried to use all of it as a film school. I did particularly did two films with Brian De Palma, uh, the first of which, which was called Home Movies, which is not a well-known film of his. It made $400,000, um, and the entire project was done with film students. He was teaching at Sarah Lawrence University, and he decided the one way to teach how to make an independent movie was to make an independent movie. So he brought out an old story of his, and he put in some money, and, and George Lucas put in some money, and Spielberg put in some money, and basically financed this project, and the students took Brian's story, wrote a script, they did everything except direct it and act. The actors were professional, Brian was professional, everything else for students, and it was amazing. It, first of all, they were a great crew. I mean, they didn't know anything, but they, made it, they had so much enthusiasm. And so I came into that, and I said to Brian, listen, can I be like one of the students, because this is what I want? And he was like, sure. So I became part of that whole experience, which was an amazing sort of master class in filmmaking. Um, and then I did Just to Kill with Brian after that, and we continued that sort of mentor relationship. So I was very lucky. I had some really great teachers, uh, and I got to get paid for it at the same time while I was, while I was acting. Right. And while you were acting and um, observing directors, you knew that you wanted to direct. Yes. I mean, in, indeed, that was what my first impulse had been. And I wanted to get back there. I wasn't always sure how, but I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So every time I took a job... Um, I tried to learn as much as I could from that director because every director had different strengths, different weaknesses. Uh, some were more focused on performance, some were focused on the technical, but each had stuff that you could learn from. Uh, and then in around 1984 or 5, one of the kids who'd worked on home movies with me was a young guy named Mark Romanek, who's now become one of the biggest video directors and commercial directors, and he did one-hour photo. And we hit off a friendship, and I really liked his student films. And he came to me with an idea for a character that he thought I'd be good at playing, but he didn't have a story. So we started working on the story together. We wrote the script um, and slowly put money together. And so I ended up acting the film, but also co-writing it and co-producing it. And it was called Static. And it did very well in Europe, uh, in England, um, and did well critically here, although it had almost no commercial life here. And that was the transition piece into making films. So then somebody saw that and said, well, what else do you have? And I told them about The Chocolate Wars. I said, this is this great book. It could be done very inexpensively. It sold like 900,000 copies at that point. I said, if, if, even if I make a bad movie, you're going to not lose any money because there's going to be enough interest. Be, and, 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 you know, as things go in Hollywood, that's what they wanted to hear. They're like, oh, that makes sense. All right, well, then you can do it.